Hi guys, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to talk about the unified target inside of UiPath Studio. And if you've ever built an automation in Studio, I'm sure you know about selectors, but what's the difference between a selector and unified target? I'm going to show you that in this video. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You do that by hitting the subscribe button down below and also hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I put out new videos. And that's about once or twice a week. So without any more delays, let's just get to it. All right, so we're inside a new project in UiPath Studio. And the first thing I'm going to do is something that I shouldn't do, but I'm going to do it anyways. I'm going to go to my activities pane and then go to the filter button and enable the display of classic activities. That will give us some more activities out here in my toolbox. And I'll type in click in the search box. And if I scroll down a little bit, I can see that I now have the classic UI automation activities, including the click activity. And if I drag that into my automation and indicate on screen, I have my uh, trusty calculator over here. And I just want to press the seven button, right? And what I just did was I built a classic selector. And a classic selector, if we go to the target property over here, and select the selector attribute, we get into the selector editor, right? And um, this is basically sort of the address of the element that we just clicked inside of calculator. So we have the name of the uh, application. Inside of that, we have uh, uh, an element called a number pad. That's probably a panel inside of the calculator that holds a number of buttons. And then below that, we have a button and we have even something that has the name seven. So UiPath is looking for all of these attribute values inside of the object tree of the application that we're automating, in this case, calculator. And it's kind of like a street address, right? You, you have a country, you have a city, you have a street name, you have a house number, maybe even the name of a person. So you can identify someone you want to, you know, send a present to or whatever. In the same way, we can identify a screen element by listing all of these attributes, hoping that they combined will make up for a unique combination uh, that will give us this exact button, in this case, the seven button. And this is how we built selectors in the old days up until not so long ago. And they're quite okay. They were for a long time. And you can use wildcards in them and that gives a, a little bit more flexibility. It also gives a vulnerability because if you add wildcards, then, well, there's a bigger chance you'll find something, but there's also a bigger chance that you'll find the wrong something. So, UiPath decided to give us something called the unified target. And the unified target basically is a better way of building selectors. Let me show you how that works. So I'm going to cancel out of the selector editor and I'm also going to cancel my um, click uh, action here. And if I just drag a normal click activity into my uh, sequence here, I'm going to immediately get an error saying that it needs to live inside of a use application or browser activity. So we'll have to search for that. We'll drag that into our sequence, and then we'll move the click activity inside the scope of that use application activity. Now we need to indicate what application is it we want to automate. So we'll do that by clicking indicate application here, then selecting, of course, the good old trusty calculator application. And now anything we do inside of this uh, do sequence will be in the context of the calculator application. So now I have the click activity and it knows then that I want to indicate actions inside of that application scope. So now I can indicate in app calculator. And when I then move the mouse around here, then it will find all of the elements inside of that application. If I move, for example, to the folder or the recycle bin here, it won't recognize them because they are not inside of that application scope. So again, if I now click the seven button, it's going to uh, build basically a number of selectors. It's also going to enable me to, to create an anchor, and we'll get back to that in just a second. For now, I'm just going to click uh, Confirm. And if we then inside Studio, select the Click 7 activity, go to the Properties window, we can see here that inside of the Target property, we have a number of uh, attributes. And one of them is a strict selector here. We also have something called a fuzzy selector, and we have some CV properties up here. So let's jump back into the editor and see exactly what this all means. 
So what we have in this window is basically a number of things. And let me just collapse some of these things a little bit. We have some options. I'm not going to get into those right now. We have a window selector. What is the application scope for this entire descriptor? And then down below that, we have the target. And the target contains a number of things. It contains a strict selector, a fuzzy selector, uh, some computer vision stuff, and an image selector. So the computer vision part of this descriptor is actually new from, I believe, the 23.4 version of Studio. But the strict fuzzy and image selector we've seen for, for quite a while now. So what these are basically are different versions of ways of finding that unique screen element that we're looking for, the seven button, right? So the first thing we have is the strict selector. And basically what that is, is the equivalent of what we had before. It's a selector that must match the element 100%. And if it doesn't match 100%, it's not going to find a match. Then we have a fuzzy selector. And what that does is it looks for as good a match as possible of whatever is in the selector definition. So if it doesn't find something that's 100% match, then it might match it anyways. And in fact, we have this slider down here at the bottom of it, where we can kind of say, how, how strict do you want this uh, selector to be? So if we slide it all the way to the right, so it says one, that means it needs to be a complete match, right? And then we can slide it down and say, okay, if it's just a 60% match, then we're happy, we'll, we, we'll call that a match. Then we have a computer vision selector. Computer vision is something, I've made a video about it, there's a link to it in the card up here somewhere. Um, but computer vision is basically UI pass way of identifying screen elements by sort of looking at them with computer vision. And that computer vision engine is continually improved by uh, users' data being sent back to UI path if you choose to. And, and then rebuilding this AI engine that can identify screen elements. And that's the new part from version 23.4. And then at the bottom, we have image recognition, where basically we'll try to look for something that looks like a static image, just by comparing pixel to pixel. Now, all of these four selectors, basically, are then going to work together. So you can say, if you don't want to use the image uh, selector, you can actually just disable it and it won't be used. But Together, these uh, these four selectors actually can 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 make for quite a powerful uh, combination of finding uh, your screen element. So when we were defining the target before, we saw that we could also define this anchor. And basically, an anchor is something that is in relation to the original selector, so that uh, if something in this case is next to the eight button and also has a fairly good match of you know, these other selectors, it needs to be a button that has the text seven on it and so forth, then it will just have improved accuracy. And you can define more than one anchor um, on a selector. So uh, now I've defined one anchor on the selector and I can just click the little anchor button here. And then I can actually say, okay, it needs to be a button that's next to the eight button and above the four button. And in that way, you can just build something that is very likely to find the right uh, target. Now, the way it then works, now I just defined two anchors for this descriptor, right? So if I confirm it now, what we can see is that two additional attributes were added to our target uh, property over here. So uh, anchor one and anchor two are basically selectors in their own right. But what the unified target engine will do is if we just go into the editor again, is that it will of course take into consideration the target that we define first, the green box. And then it will calculate any combination of any of the selectors inside of that target with any of the selectors inside of the anchor one and any of the selectors inside of the anchor two. So it's going to build a huge number of combinations. The more uh, selectors you have inside the target combined with how many selectors you have in a number of anchors, the more combinations it can try out right. And the first time it finds a match that uniquely defines one screen element, that's your target. So the unified target basically takes all of these things that you just built into consideration. So instead of having just one selector, maybe with a couple of wildcards in it, that would then yeah add flexibility, but also add risk, then the unified target takes all of these things that you've built, all of these selectors that you've built, and finds a combination that will uniquely identify and that one screen element you're looking for. And that's a huge strength in building your automations. Now, before I go, I want to ask you one thing. That is when you've built 
a good descriptor using this method, make sure you add it to the object repository. And if you're not familiar with the object repository, it's a, well, repository of descriptors for applications. So every time you uh, automate an application, you build descriptors and you save them so that the next time you come back to that same application, you can reuse those uh, descriptors. And it also makes it easier if something changes inside of an application. For example, if a button moves or gets a new name or text or something like that, then you go into object repository, you change the descriptor once, redeploy the object repository as a library that all of your automations that automate that application uses, and then you only need to change it in one place and you know for a fact that all of the automations you have that automate that uh, application that uses that button are updated and will work in the future. So I'm going to do um, a, a new video or maybe a couple of videos about object repositories. So make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell. And if you like this video, I hope you did. Make sure you give it a thumbs up and I hope to see you in the next one. That's all for now. See you. Bye-bye.